what is up you guys my name is Jess and welcome or welcome back to Planted Hippie. Welcome back to another planty video you guys. I know I have been quite absent for the almost past four weeks from my channel. I do apologize about that. I believe in my last video I let you guys know that I have just been super busy with my kittens and recently I had two kittens go home. I retired one of my mother breeding cats who also went to a new family. I also had that litter of three that came from one of my mama cats, Luna, who ended up needing a c-section. They are all doing great. I showed you guys them in the last video and I guess I can show you guys some b-roll of them as well right now to show you how much they've grown. They will be five weeks old this week and actually a, just a few weeks ago on Father's Day I had another litter come into the world, another little litter of two. So those babies are called yin and yang. So I'm just super excited to have a full house of kittens for this kitten season. I've definitely had a lot of work on my plate as well as I'm starting a new job in July so I've just been preparing for that. So I do apologize for the lack of videos and content, but I am hoping to get back on schedule and I have a lot of new content coming up for you guys, a few reviews and other things like that. So definitely stay tuned for that. But for today, I do wanna go ahead and show you all my top five favorite houseplants for the month of June. And I cannot believe I'm saying June because where the heck did the year go? But I'm super excited to show you all all of the plants that have been catching my eye this month and I hope you enjoy seeing them all. So if that does interest you, I please ask that you stick around, leave a like, maybe even a comment down below or even hitting that subscribe bell so that you are notified every time I upload a new video and to help me keep on planting. Please also don't forget to follow me on Instagram at plants.hippie where I post new planty photos and occasionally reels daily. So with that, let's go ahead and get into this month's houseplant favorites. Alrighty, as you guys can tell, I'm in a little bit of a different location as well than I usually film in. I have these skylights in my living room and it's a really nice sunny day so I thought I'd utilize the nice lighting and film in here for once. So I put some plants in the back to make it more jungle vibes. These are already here, I just sort of move them around so that they're kind of like framing me. But let's go ahead and get into the first plant. So this first plant I'm super excited to show you guys. It is a brand new plant to my collection as well as being the first plant of this particular species that I've ever gotten. I have gotten, I guess, I guess that was a lie. I guess I have tried out this species before, but I did not succeed with the first one because I didn't really understand or know about the care requirements. And that one ended up dying. It was just a traditional staghorn fern. And that is part of the platycerium family. And I wanted to try again, but with a different type of platycerium. And this plant in particular is super special because it was actually a gift for my fiance Austin, just because he has been really interested in trying out this particular platycerum. And I'm super excited to show you all. So it's technically not my plant, but it's gonna be like a shared plant between us. And that is the platycerum Ridleyi. So this is a really cool, platycerum like I said and it is part of like the staghorn family that's where they get these like little horns and that's where they get their name but the real name or like scientific name for them is in the platycerum family and this is a Ridley eye so if you can tell they kind of get like really cool veining uh, shields and this is what kind of protects the plant and if you can see here it has a cute little horn starting to come out here. Excuse my nails, I don't have any nails on. Lately I'm giving them a break, so <laughs> got some nubs. But I'm super excited to welcome this plant into my collection. I just got it in the mail yesterday and I was really freaked out because it came very, very limp. If you know um, the whole like Southeast and like South United States is like going through a huge heat wave. So not very smart on my end to get a plant right now and it did not like being in that hot box. But luckily I popped it straight into Austin's grow tent last night, which I think it was in his Highland grow tent, which has a little bit of a nighttime cool temp drop. And I think it really has perked up a lot. I have been in contact with the seller and she's been super, super sweet and even offered me a replacement just in case this one does end up taking a dive. But after a night in the grow tent, it has perked up quite a bit. 
yesterday it was feeling almost like the consistency and looking like like limp lettuce in a way like very wilty and not very happy at all it did suffer a little bit of cosmetic damage in the box it kind of got bent Try to get a better picture it kind of got bent up right there in a little crease fold tear but eventually a new sheath or shield will cover that one up anyway so it's not a big deal to me and the cute little antler arm is growing so i'm super excited to see how that continues to unfurl itself i guess so i'm super excited to add this plant to my collection and i'm obviously going to be learning a lot more about it it definitely likes to be in the tent as I have seen, so we'll probably just end up keeping it in there in a very high light spot since these guys love light. So um, this was our first plant on the favorites list today, my Platycerium ridleyi. Alrighty, so for the next plant, I actually just recently posted this plant on my plant Instagram at planted.hippie. So if you aren't following me, definitely go follow over there to see more of my collection and kind of like daily updates on plants that I'm loving. So I just posted a picture of this and I had to include it in today's favorites video because it is just so stinking cute. I've had this particular Hoya for over a year now and it got really, really long on one strand. So I cut it back, took those rooted cuttings and waited for them to root out really nicely. I was planning on selling them, but I realized that I just wanted to make a fuller pot and really make a really nice bushy plant. And I found the perfect planner for it, so I had to show you guys how cute this combo is. <laughs> Look how cute that is. Do a little zoom in on the plant and on the planter. It is a cute little llama pot. I love his little butt. And the like saddle or whatever, the blanket that they wear is really pretty like mandala um looking and i absolutely am in love with this plant this is my hoya lori lynn or hoya kentiana lori lynn it kind of goes by both names i know that it's in the kentiana family so it is basically like wayedii or kentiana i don't even know if wayedii is still a thing i've seen mixed things but it is basically the same plant except that as you can see Instead of the variegation and the pink almost um, splashiness that they get, the pink actually goes on the outer margins of the leaves and then the variegation also follows the pink margin. So the green is basically on the inside rather than the variegation being on the inside if that makes sense. As well as, as you can see, some of them can be completely white with the pink margin. So it's just super, super beautiful. I have loved this Hoya ever since I saw a Instagrammer. I forget her name. I'll try and put up her Lori Lynn up on screen. But when I saw hers, it was so pink and beautiful. And I was like, I need that. I need that plant. So I'm super, super glad I ended up getting a cutting and it has just turned into a really beautiful plant since then. And as you can see right back here are all those two cuttings that I added in. The original plant, like the like mass of it, was in a terracotta pot and I was noticing that it kind of got a little stunted in its growth. It wasn't really doing that great in the Mills Botol that I had it in right under the grow light. So I think maybe it was maybe getting too much light in a way. I treated it for any like pest or anything so hopefully that's not the issue because the um, cuttings that I took were in the same spot next to it. So uh those cuttings were in a plastic pot and i was able to like monitor the roots and see that they were green and when to water them and everything whereas the uh, main plant was in the terracotta pot and i had a hard time knowing when to water it and i think the terracotta was just drying it out too fast so i went ahead and moved it into this ceramic llama and it has a really big deep pot in there like it really like it gets like wider on the sides as you can see from his little body so it has plenty of room to grow out the roots the roots looked really good so luckily it's not like dry rotted or anything but i think it'll be a lot happier in this less porous um pot so that it can retain its moisture a little bit more and i did end up moving it out of the millsbow cabinet and putting it in my western facing window 
because I actually have a hanging basket of my Hoya Polynera elbow in that window and it's doing really well. So I'm hoping the change of scenery will be really good for this girl. And I definitely had to make a mention of her because look how cute it is together. It's like cascading off her back. It's so cute. Um, I can't wait for it to get a little bit bigger and longer for me because obviously I cut it back right here. It was pretty long. It was probably about to here when I cut it back for the cuttings. And now that it has a lot more growth points going on, I'm hoping throughout the rest of the growing season, it will do really well for me. So it's relatively easy. Like I said, I don't think it was enjoying the terracotta and it's definitely a more thirstier Hoya. So I think again, with the change of pot, it will be a lot happier and hold on to moisture a little bit more. So I'm not always having to check on it, but I would definitely, definitely be checking on it a lot more frequently now that it is in its new place. Cause I know in the Western facing window, it can dry out a little bit faster than in the cabinets. So I'll just have to keep an eye on it and I'll definitely keep you guys updated on how it continues to do. It honestly kind of goes with my little cabinet back here. So I have a, a mother grow light up there. So maybe I'll move it up there eventually if it doesn't do well in that uh, Western facing window. Cause this pot is just so cute. I have to have it on display somewhere. It could not be in the cabinet. So yeah, that's definitely why I had to give it a mention. The pot as well as the beautiful plant. I'll get out of the way for a second so you can just admire it. So freaking beautiful. I'm so glad I did not end up selling those cuttings and just ended up repotting it all back into the same pot because this looks absolutely stunning. So again, I will be keeping you guys updated on how it does. Maybe we'll do a little comparison uh, video at the end of the growing season for some of the plants that have just grown a ton. And if it does, I will definitely include it. So yeah, that was our second plant for the day, my Hoya Lori Lynn. Alrighty, for the next plant, I haven't showed this plant on a video in a hot minute. So I'm super excited to show you guys the growth and how beautiful this plant is. It may be a little hard to show in frame, but I have just been so, so loving all of the growth on this beautiful cactus. And if you guys know, I got this cactus in Arizona and I think I mentioned it a few months back on like my cactus growing station outside when I moved everything out there for the summer. And it has already grown so much since then. So the cactus I'm talking about Look how beautiful, it goes all the way down. It has a ton of tentacles. I almost wanna name her like Medusa cause she's just so amazing. She has a few thicker uh, tails, I guess. This is, if you don't know, a monkey tail cactus and that's where it gets its look and name from. It has very, very fuzzy and soft um, spines on it. So just look at that, look at all of them. I'm hoping as it starts to mature more, it will obviously get more thick in its tentacles or tails, I guess. And oh my gosh, guys, this is just so freaking cool. I love this cactus, it is so unique. Actually, this tail is sprouting off from this tail. That's cool, so I can tear that one off and repot it, so that'd be really cool. I'm honestly kind of running out of room in this pot to continue repotting it. So maybe I'll start selling some cuttings of it. I don't know how to call that. They're not really cuttings. They're just like plucked off. So I'm just, again, so obsessed with how much this has grown. I'm really happy with the growth pattern of this plant as well. I think it really cascades very nicely and looks like a classic monkey tail cactus and if you guys know what these guys look like when they are mature, I can't wait till again, the tails get a little bit fatter and it'll obviously get more fuzzy as it matures as well. And they almost become like white to the like look of them because there's just so much fuzz on them. And I mean, they can still prick you. I think I pricked myself on accident, but um, it's a lot less harsh um, than your typical cactus. And if you pet it downward, it won't prick you, but it is just so freaking beautiful. I cannot get enough of this cactus. And again, I can't wait till it gets even bigger for me. It is really, really easy care. I water it basically when it rains, it kinda gets like that humidity. And then if I really notice that the soil is super dry, I'll go ahead and give it a really deep watering. 
because it is sort of up against my house where like the gutters come over it so it doesn't get rained on all the time because cactus do not like to have a ton of water. But this one has just been super, super easy for me and I am absolutely in love with the tentacles or the tails. I keep calling them tentacles, but they're tails. And I just am so in love with it. I cannot get enough of this plant. And again, I'll keep you guys updated on how it continues to grow. Oh, and I cannot wait until it blooms for me because these blooms are so beautiful. They kind of come, I guess, along the edges of the tails as well as like at the tips of them. So they sort of point downwards like Hoya linearis peduncles. And I cannot wait for that to happen. I can't wait. And the way I have it sitting in its spot outside, all the tentacles are kind of reaching out for the sun. So it has a really nice back where I can put it up against um, the wall or like the little um, shelf that I have it in and not hurt any of the arms. And yeah, freaking obsessed with this girl. So, so happy. I'm honestly just going to name her Medusa now because look at that, like little snake heads. So yeah, again, I'll keep you guys updated on how it continues to grow this growing season. And maybe I'll take some like little nubs off of it and sell them on Facebook Marketplace. So if you're interested, you can also DM me on Instagram. And cactus are easy to ship, so I'll probably be willing to ship them as well. So if you want a monkey tail, hit me up. That was our third plant for the day, my monkey tail cactus. Alrighty, for the next plant, it is another newer plant to my collection. I did post about it on my Instagram when I got it, as well as when I put it on this beautiful moss pole, so it is a climber. And if you have seen my wishlist plant video, I'll link it up above. I did mention this plant in my wishlist plant video, so I'm super excited to yet again scratch off another wishlist plant for the year. And without further ado, here she is. So if you can tell, this is a philodendron splendid and I'm super freaking excited. It was pushing out this new leaf whenever I got it. So it is a little bit smaller than the previous one just because I'm sure it's acclimating and a little shocked from being shipped over. And if you can tell, I have this beautiful Russo plant care moss pole that I had attached to it. And these ones specifically are really great because they come with detachable uh, straps across the moss pole. So whenever it does reach the top of the pole, I can simply unstrap them. And with the roots sort of going into the pole, obviously like how we want, it will be really easy to unstrap it, take the plant out of the pole completely without damaging the stem or the roots. And then I'll be able to remove the moss or take a cutting and sort of add it on to another new pole and then start over so it can continue to grow and get bigger. So I've been wanting this plant for a really long time, so I'm really happy I was able to get it. This is actually a gift from my fiance, Austin. He just surprised me with it one day. I woke up, I literally rolled over and woke up and it was sitting on my computer. And I was like, oh my God, is that what I think it is? <laughs> And of course he knew I've been wanting one. So he's just super sweet when he surprises me like that. And I couldn't be happier with this beautiful plant. And obviously it'll continue to get nice and big and hopefully do well for me and grow up its pole eventually. I do have the rest of the pole sort of empty just cause it's not tall enough. And I kind of ran out of moss. So there's that. But I'm so excited to have this plant in my collection. Again, super excited to cross off another wishlist plant off the list for the year. And yeah, I'm super, super pumped about this. And I'm obviously learning about it. It's not really different than any of my other philodendrons. So I don't foresee it giving me any issues, knock on wood. So I will obviously keep you guys updated. And that was our second to last plant for the day, my philodendron splendid. Alrighty, we've made it to the last plant on my list today and I'm super excited to show you guys this. I recently repotted this plant and put it on a little bamboo stake in a recent and I guess my only real repot video. So if you haven't seen that one, go check it out. But it has really already grown so much since that video. It's only been about a month and a half. So I'm so excited to show you guys this plant. It is my Syngonium Albo, and I specifically wanted to show this off to you guys because look at this freaking leaf. Look how stunning. 
it has like all of the colors that like it can have when it's being variegated so it's like a creamy white then like a minty and then the normal green it has been pushing growth out like crazy here's another leaf right here here's another really beautiful stunning leaf up here and like i mentioned in the repotting video there is two main plants that i potted into this pot together and one of them was a little bit more green and less variegation than the other one and it looks like it sort of is giving me like one green leaf and then as you can see it gave me a really nice variegated one so it's sort of going back and forth which i don't mind at all it's super super beautiful and then of course the more variegated uh plant is just freaking showing off that is my favorite leaf ever i love albo variegation and of course the rest of the plant is amazing as well I'm just so freaking amazed at how beautiful this plant is. I cannot wait until it grows to the top of its now kind of looking short bamboo stake. I may have to put it on a new stake eventually. But again, super, super thrilled to have this plant. If you guys know Wild Fern, I got mine because of her beautiful Albo Syngonium. So I am hoping I'm doing it justice and I'm so happy to have this plant in my collection. It honestly is starting to need another little grow tape thing to keep it attached. It is just growing so so fast so I am super thrilled that this is doing well and that it acclimated really well to its new environment in the plant room since it was in the Millsbow cabinets before and super super easy care as well i just sort of water it when it's dry and as you can see here you can kind of see the soil is looking quite dry right now i yeah i just sort of scrape away the the top of the soil and if it goes dry any more than like my finger length i will go ahead and give it a really deep watering you can also use a moisture meter probe to help you out with measuring how much water is in the pot and I have a lot of those I just I use them and then I put them down and I can't ever find them again so but yeah I definitely have to find that again because it just makes my life a lot easier using the moisture meters so yeah I cannot say enough good things about this plant if you are in the market for wanting to try syngonium I definitely recommend the albo as a good starter because I know there are more rare, um, like the tricolor syngonium, which I'm super interested in because it's beautiful and pink. But this is just super, super amazing and super easy care, like I said. It almost acts more like a philodendron, in my opinion. And definitely go for one that has a good balance of marbled variegation. So if you are looking for one, I would recommend looking for leaves that kind of look like this. So good balance of variegation and green so that you don't get a fully white leaf like this one almost is but I don't mind because this is so beautiful and I only recommend this because I know that the white on these fully like variegated pieces don't really last forever as you can see this one is starting to get a little brown at the tip so I am anticipating that this one will not look beautiful like this forever but I am also experimenting with some silica so I got some silica gel or silica powder and I did get that silica for my Monstera Aurea to help the browning on its variegated parts since it does have very big half moon pieces on it and I guess I will go ahead and try it on this gal as well to sort of prevent any of the white from browning and going crappy so Oh, I'm just so in love with this freaking plant. It is so beautiful. I had to show off this new leaf and I definitely recommend it to anyone trying to get into Syngonium. I wasn't really a huge fan until I saw these and I saw one in person at EFG and it was just like this massive tower of it, fully variegated, beautiful variegation on it. And I wanted one ever since. So yeah. That was our last plant for the day. I so do appreciate you if you stuck all the way to the end and I do please ask that you leave a like, a comment down below, or even hitting that subscribe bell so that you are notified every time I upload a new video and to help me keep on planting. 
Please also don't forget to follow me on Instagram at planty.hippie where I post new planty photos and occasionally reels daily. So with that, I will see you all in the next video, which will be coming a lot more sooner than a month, I promise. So thank you guys for watching again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.